what's up guys welcome back to the realistic room of Wrexham this is episode number 43 and uh well we're into the start of our third season with Wrexham now in the championship kicked off the season in the last episode opening with a defeat at Sunderland but then our first home game at the race course in the championship was a Welsh derby and we overcame Cardiff to win 2-1 to get our first points on the board and then we rounded off the episode with a a monumental win against Coventry in the Carabao Cup first round, beating them 7-1, featuring hat-tricks from Alex Lowry and Rocco Vatter as well. Tom Williams starred in that one as well. So happy with um, how we're doing so far. Two wins out of three in all comps. We take on Sheffield United in today's first game of the episode. You would have seen the league. They are 2-0 and in the league right now, and they also won in the cup. So they are three wins from three, the Blades. And uh, they are looking to make it four straight wins. Well, they finished fifth in the championship last season and uh, failed in the playoffs. So they're looking to go one step further. Uh, and we will make 11 changes to this side. So obviously, we, we rotated heavily for the cup game. And uh, we back to our strongest 11 today with Fodderingham and Koulibaly facing their former side today. And it would be Fodderingham Foddering, in action straight away, making a save. And um, as we just see here, Elliot Lee... Working out of Patrick Roberts. What can he do here? Gets it down the line. Can he find a ball? He can. Jewison Bennett's there. Oh, misses him. I think it went out for a corner. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but there were a couple of crazy games between these two last season in the FA Cup. As uh, I'll just hold play here for a second as uh, Josh Earl's gone in for a tackle. And, well, the referee's got his red card out. That is a red card for Josh Earl 20 minutes into the game. Nightmare start. And we are down to 10 men. Was that the right call? As we look at the replay here, he looks like he was through and go. I think it is the right call. Now, guys, let me know in the comments. Should we implement a three-match ban for players that receive a straight red card? Because in the game, they only uh, players only get a one-game ban. But in real life, if a player gets a straight red, a straight red, they miss three games. So let me know in the comments. Should we implement a three-match ban? I obviously won't be able to implement that on Josh Earl because there will be two more games this episode. But let me know for future red cards, should we implement a three-match ban for realism's sake, you know? Let me know. Anyway, going back to the FA Cup ties last season. Um, so this was when Sheffield United were in the, champ uh, in the championship pushing for the Premier League and Wrexham were in the National League. It was in the fourth round of the Cup. And Sheffield United travelled to North Wales to the racecourse ground and they played out an absolute belter of a game. 3-3 it finished. A red card as well for uh, Dan Jebison, I think it was. It was an off-the-ball incident. Um, Sheffield United took the lead in, I think it was in the first few minutes, uh, Ollie, uh, Ollie McBurney scored. Uh, Wrexham came back and then there were late goals involved, including a 95th-minute equaliser from John Egan to take it to a, to a replay. All the Wrexham fans thought they had won it. Unfortunately, they didn't. Went back to Bramble Lane and even that game was a cracker as well. It was one all until the death when Sheffield United scored two injury time goals. But it showed me that Wrexham could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a team like Sheffield United. And we're doing so in this game as well. Despite being down to 10 men, we took the lead with 20 minutes to go. Cross in from Mendy to the back stick. Patrick Roberts does really well. I actually thought he was offside, but he heads it back into a dangerous area. And Jewison Bennett is there to head home his first league goal of the season. And we have a 1-0 lead to defend for 20 minutes. Could we pull off a shock here? You know, League One side last year, playing a side who have won their opening three games in all competitions, playing with 10 men away from home. Can we see this one out? Well, after a, suit, a few subs to uh, try and seal the victory, we have the ball down in the corner. We win the corner and that will surely be it now. And uh, as we see the winning goal once again, Jewison Bennett, his second shot of the game. And heading is not his strongest point, the winger, but he has been uh, fantastic for us at the start of this season and the back end of last season as well. He's been absolutely phenomenal. He floats in that corner. It gets headed out, but it will not matter as the referee blows full time. And what a big win for Wrexham. Away from home at Bramble Lane, 70 minutes we played with 10 men. And we we were up to the task. The defence stood still. Fodderingham against his former side was massive in goal making. I, I believe four or five big saves, and he gets his first clean sheet in a Wrexham shirt against his former side. One nil win, back to back league wins for us now, and that's three wins in a row in all competitions. See us move to six points from a possible nine and up to ninth in the table. I know it's very, very early stages yet, as you see uh, a couple of teams on 100% record still. 
like I said in the last episode, it's so important to get the points on the board early doors. So two wins from three. I'm happy with that as we head into the third ga- uh, second game of the es- episode. And it is Blackburn Rovers, who are in 21st right now, yet to win in any competition this season. One draw, two defeats in the league, and they lost in the cup as well. Their main threat, Sammy Sh- uh, Smodix, I think it's uh, pronounced, the Irish Cam. He is having the season of his life. 21 league goals this season for Blackburn. He's been phenomenal to watch. And uh, this Blackburn side, despite them, despite their league position, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna overlook them and uh, get ahead of myself here. We want to take each game as it comes, and it would be the visitors that would take a one 0 lead. Cyrus Christie with the turnover, and uh, Blackburn worked the ball well, and they uh, force a tap in. Now this was a heavily rotated side, and we had to make six changes. Earl was obviously suspended, and then other players hadn't um, recovered fully for fitness. We made plenty of changes as a uh, Uma Khan made a really good comment here and I want you guys to let me know um, what you think about this should we do rewards um, sorry should we do awards at the end of the season now I know obviously the game has player of the season which Paul Mullen got last season but should we do personal Wrexham awards as well so at the end of the season we could do player of the season young player of the season and you guys in the comments could vote um, so let me know if you're up for that I think I will do that to be honest um, I, it sounds like a really good uh, suggestion. So Uma Khan, thank you for that suggestion. We will be implementing that. But let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think of that suggestion? Well, uh, going back into the game and, well, Mason Guest, one of those su- uh, six substitutes I mentioned, he slid in for a tackle, which I thought was a fair tackle. Referee deemed it a foul. And from the resulting free kick, we couldn't get the ball clear and Blackburn would double their lead before the break. Uh, Televich would uh, make it 2-0. He, he's grabbed his second and Blackburn second of the game. And then 64 minutes on the clock, O'Connell gives the ball away. Sigurdsson bursting down the left and the captain slides in recklessly. And this is surely just going to be a yell. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. We, we've had another player sent off. Back-to-back games, back-to-back red cards. And I know this was a rash tackle, but it's not like he was last man. Like, oh, there was cover. Mason Guest was there. And guys, let me know again. Should we implement a three-match ban for straight red cards? I really don't think this was a red card at all. I think this was quite harsh. Um, if this was real life, we would definitely appeal that and I think it would get overturned. But I don't think that was a red card at all. Let me know in the comments. But more importantly, let me know, should we implement a three-match ban? Like I said, Josh Earl obviously won't, we won't be able to implement his, his three-match ban. But should we implement it on Ewan O'Connell? He'll miss the next game uh, against Hull in this episode and then... If you let me know in the comments, then he could potentially miss the next two games in the next episode as well. I think for realism, it could be a cool thing to do. Um, I don't know why they don't do it in the game, but yeah, that that has cost us massively in this game. To be honest, I don't think we were going to catch up with Blackburn anyway. We were, we were playing quite poorly. I think the changes did us a lot of damage and Blackburn, to be fair to them, were on top form. And despite this late goal from Tom Williams, his first league goal for the club, a um, really nice finish, actually, after great work from Luke Chambers. After He came on um, as a makeshift centre-back, I think, um, after O'Connell send, sending off. And Chambers was fantastic, and he actually picked up an assist for the goal. Tom Williams with a brilliant finish, and who's, he's actually got more goals than Paul Mullen this season. Tom Williams, you know, our new number nine. Um, yeah, his, his late finish doesn't count for much, and we lose this one 2-1, so... Yeah, we give Blackburn their th- first victory of the season. That puts us on two wins and two defeats. I feel like that's my, maybe how the season's going to go. You know, one step forward, one step back. I feel like we're still going to be in a relegation scrap. I think the league will catch up with us. But for now, I'm happy that we're still getting points on the board. As Paul Mullen comes to us and says, he's not happy that we dragged him off despite us losing in that game. To be honest, Paul, the only reason I did that was because your fitness was so low. You shouldn't have really started that game. But we start you because you're our, our key striker, despite having not scored this season. Um, so, yeah, it's a bit annoying that they don't understand that they came off purely because of fitness senses. He was practically, you know, empty. So I had to bring him off. Um, and he, he hadn't actually done much in the game as well. So I feel like it was a fair decision as we reject a couple of loan offers here for Armstrong. And then Calvin comes in with an interesting comment. Are we going to sign Jack Marriott as Wrexham signed him in real life? Now, despite him being a free agent and, you know, being a striker, which perhaps is a position we do need to strengthen, although Tom Williams, you know, goal in the last game, he's been a fantastic addition. I'm not going to sign the players that Wrexham signed in real life. I want to make it my own career mode. Um, But I appreciate that comment anyway, Calvin. And then a couple of transfer suggestions. Obviously, the transfer window is is still open, so keep those coming. 
First one was for Ryan Brewster, the former Liverpool striker, now a Sheffield United. Uh, 25 years old, could be a decent decent could be a decent replacement for Paul Mullin. Potentially, I might put a scout out for him. And then a couple other suggestions, a couple of Welsh players. Uh, Dan James, who's now at Valencia, the former Leeds Man United winger. Could be a decent shout. I don't hate it. He's 27 now. I'm quite happy with our winger situation at the moment, but he could be a decent shout. And then Ben Davis was actually a really interesting one. The Welsh uh, defender of Tottenham, who's been there for, uh, I think, about 10 years now. I've had him on my transfer list for a couple of years just because I, I felt like he would be a good signing to pick up if he was a free agent but as you would have seen there he is going to retire at the end of the season so we won't be able to pick up Ben Davis but as always I really appreciate your suggestions in the comments keep them coming we've got a cut I think we've got a couple more weeks of the transfer window so keep those suggestions coming we're going into the third and final game of the episode it would be whole City away from home, the Tigers, who are, uh, after losing their opening two league games, are looking for their fourth win on the bounce. Two league wins and a win in the cup as well. A uh, 4-0 thumping of Ipswich has seen them uh, surge up the table and they're looking for four wins in the in the row. And to be honest, in real life, former whole player Liam Rossini has been doing a fantastic job there as he's looking to make a late push for the playoffs for the Tigers in real life and I hope they go up man they're like an old school well not an old school Prem team but I remember them in you know around like the 2010 like 2008 2009 2010 era when uh, Phil Brown was in charge they were they were fun when they were in the Premier League and I think Liam Rossini is doing a really good job there as uh, you know he's obviously a young manager but he's getting loads of praise at the moment and uh, yeah they're going to be a tough opposition today and as you can see you know they were peppering our goal Fodderingham was coming up with big saves we had really good chances as well though uh, uh, Patrick Roberts there not taking a good chance as uh, we headed into the final 20 minutes and uh, Estupinian's shot was blocked but then another turnover from Cyrus Christie and Hull get to work Cynic finds his fellow substitute Estupinian and he would smash home and What's that old cliche? If you don't take your chances, you will be punished. And we have been here. Plenty of chances for the team. Paul Mullen just not firing at the moment. Patrick Roberts um, off target as well. And Hull look like they're going to make it four wins on the bounce. And it's going to be back-to-back -back defeats for us. Well, with are just over 15 minutes to go. There's still plenty of time. We make a couple of subs. Roque Vatter's on. Uh, we bring on Tom Williams as well. We drop Paul Mullen to Cam, which is uh, what we did a few times last season. When we um, brought on Tom Bradshaw, striker, and dropped Paul Mullins' cam, he actually did all right in that position without a goal yet this season. And yeah, you can see with this shot here, I just feel like he's just lacking that confidence. You know, he's not, he's it, normally when he gets the ball, you just, he feels like he's calm, collected, and he's going to put it in the back of the net. I feel like he's just snapping at chances at the moment. And uh, that was another, it wasn't a clear chance, edge of the box. But it was a decent effort and it went just over. Well, in the 89th and now 90th minute, we would get to work. And Paul Mullen, can he right the wrongs? Yes, he can. That's a huge goal, not just for the team, but for Paul Mullen himself. I was just slating him, saying that he doesn't. He looks like a shadow of himself. He's been our key player for the last two seasons. Well, he's just got his first goal of the season in the 90th minute at Hull. And we are going to snatch a point away from the Tigers. It was a beautiful move. Luke Chambers again uh, impressing me after coming on. He wins the ball back in his own box. He then plays some nice one-touch football involving Alfie Devine and Paul Mullin. Alfie Devine eventually has the ball on the left wing. He is, he is blowing. He's out of energy. But he finds a pass to Paul Mullin. And PM10 with a beautiful finish on his left foot. On his so-called weaker foot. Smashes it across the keeper. And Wrexham are leaving Hull with a point. Yeah, big result that. Our first draw of the season. Um, so that leaves us after five games, two wins, one draw, two defeats. And it was a really good a game, actually. Both teams had plenty of chances. But we do take that chance right at the end. We, we had missed a couple and it looked like we were going to get punished by Hull. Fortunately, we snatch a draw late on as we reject a couple of loan bids here. For Armstrong, and I think it was another bid for Barnet, which is just an unrealistic destination. Guys, let me know in the comments. Does anyone have issues with selling their players at the moment? I want to sell my players to realistic destinations, but I'm not getting any bids from EFL clubs at all. And all those players have been up for sale for like a couple months and nothing's coming in. It's really, really frustrating because I need to get these players off our books. Anyway, as we look at the table, we are down to 11th. 
But like I said, as long as we're above that drop zone, I am happy. The board wants to finish mid-table. I think we can achieve that. It's going to be an interesting one, though. We have to keep going and keep plugging along. Watford, five wins from five. Fair play to the Hornets. They are smashing it right now, as you see us in 11th. Plymouth and Rotherham, the other two promoted sides, both got a win, but uh, four defeats as well. Every team bar Preston with a win already on the board. This one's going to be a competitive one. I know it for sure. Make sure you drop a comment in the uh, comment section, guys, about the red card rule or any other transfer suggestions you have. Drop a like on the video if you're enjoying the series. Sub to the channel if you aren't already. And I'll catch you in episode 44 very soon.